Welcome everybody. This is playful activities to support whole child health. So I hope you're in the right spot. And if you are not, that's okay. You can stay. We're gonna have some fun today. So I am not gonna have any slides today. So I highly recommend you use the gallery view so we can see each other. We're gonna do some playful activities together. One of my number one goals today is for you to have an hour to play, have fun, and learn some new resources. So this is your time. So I want this to be as fun and enjoyable as possible. I am Daniel Hatcher. I'm the Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships at the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. If you're not familiar with us, we're a national public health organization. We partner with schools and out-of-school organizations all across the country to ensure kids are healthy and ready to succeed. And the way we do that is by partnering with amazing folks like y'all and share professional development and resources. So that's what this workshop is all about. I want you to leave today with an expanded toolbox of some free resources that you can use. And I'm aligning everything we talk about today back to the, to the whole child health model. Thanks for everyone who's putting your name and location in the chat. So I'm gonna start out, I, I imagine that most of you all are familiar with the whole child model, but I'm gonna put a link in the chat and I highly recommend you click that link and hold on to it, bookmark it. Because as we go through our resources today, um, I'm gonna ask reflection questions like, how does this activity tie back to the whole child model? So I'll put the link in here again. Great to see all of you today. Again, Daniel Hatcher here with Healthier Generation. And this is playful activities to support whole child health. Highly, highly recommend you put yourself on gallery view so you can see everyone's smiling faces. I'm not gonna have any slides. We're just gonna do a series of activities today. And I really want you to think about this workshop as something you could repeat, you could share with your staff and folks that you work with as well. There's nothing too magical about what I'm about to do. Uh, we're just gonna bring some of these resources to life. So I want you to feel free to steal my agenda, make it your own, turn this into a training that you could use as well. So one more time, uh, I'm gonna put in this link to the whole child model. And actually, I wanna give you a reflection question here. Click the whole child model link, or if you're familiar with it, um, that's okay. I'd like to know which part of the whole child model stands out to you. What part of the whole child model stands out to you? Maybe it's something that you've had success in. Maybe it's something that's challenging you. What part of the whole child model stands out to you? And welcome everybody. I see all your awesome names and locations in the chat. If you're just joining, we're doing our first activity. I shared a link to the whole child model. I'd like to know which component of the model stands out to you. And I'll say for me, it's, it's about staff wellness. because I think all the pieces of the whole child model really rely on how well staff are taking care of themselves. This is hard work. Uh, it's hard to pour from an empty cup. So you all supporting yourself really makes it possible to bring so many of those other components to life. Yes, Laura, employee wellness. I see a family engagement, safety. Thank you, Rachel. If a child doesn't feel safe, they can't succeed in any of the other areas. Snaps for that, agree. That goes for staff too. If staff don't feel safe, it's really hard to do, show up and do your best if you're not feeling safe. Family engagement, family engagement, awesome. Well, I will share that one of my projects at Healthier Generation is to support our family engagement work. So several of the resources I'll share today actually come from our family engagement resource collection. So you'll leave today with a lot of new resources that you can use for family engagement this spring and into the summer. 
All right, so that was our first sort of reflection. Again, this is playful activities all aligned with the whole child model. So I appreciate you sharing which of those components you um, are most interested in or things, what resonates with you. So I wanna know how you all are doing today. So I've got a resource for you. This is our emoji feelings chart. So I put the link in the chat. Would love for you to click that link, open up the emoji feelings chart and pick an emoji that reflects how you're feeling today. How are you feeling today? And this comes from our Cole's Healthy at Home resource collection. Again, this was made for families, but you can adapt this for staff and kids. You can use it with your teammates. How are you feeling today? And if you wanna combine emojis, you can do that too. And you could just write the, the word of the emoji you're feeling, or, oh, we got some emojis coming in. Sock St. Matthews, that's my favorite one. I love the sunglasses emoji. Keeping it calm, cool, and collected. Sleepy, L. Middleton, yeah, I feel that way. <laughs> I was feeling that way this morning, actually. That kind of the wild eyes with the tongue out. I like the star eyed emoji. Nico Saint Raphael, I like the cowboy hats. All right, I see some sleepy emojis. So um, I hope you're here to play and have some fun. Laura says sensitive, great. All right, so that was one of our first resources was the feelings chart. Thanks for sharing. Okay, reflection question time. Why do you think that feelings chart is important? How could that be beneficial? Thinking about summer learning. Why is the feelings chart, the emoji feelings chart, why is that beneficial? You could put one word in the chat. You can come off mute if you want. It seems simple, but I wanna know why do you think it is beneficial? Karen shares, so you know how the children are feeling before you get them. Absolutely. Connection, way to express without talking. Thanks, Adrian. Who needs help or special attention? Yep, definitely can flag and give you, help you prioritize conversations and allow students to pause and take a moment to check in with their bodies and their emotions. Thank you, Hannah. Yep, self-regulation. Claudia, quick and easy to interpret. Yes. I love health or generation resources because they are simple, they are easy, they are free. You could adapt them however you like, gauge how a kid's feeling so you can know how to help them beautifully said. It helps to let you know where your students are as they enter programming, absolutely. Express feelings, connections, prepare to help with different emotions. Let students know that what they're feeling is real and okay to feel. L. Middleton, yes, 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 I love that gives you an idea of how the children are feeling, acknowledge how they're feeling, helps show the child you care about how they're feeling. Absolutely. So it seems like a simple resource, it is, however, incredibly important for creating a welcome, safe space for young people. Effie, I like that, sets the tone for the day so you can adjust, absolutely. Well said. You all are experts and thank you for participating. I really appreciate it. And I think that that's the best part about these conferences is giving space for you all to connect. You are the true experts. So thank you for, for sharing your voice today. All right, we're gonna move to another activity. This is called Flower Breath. And it is from a resource we developed called Nature Bingo. So I put in a link to the Nature Bingo card. Again, this is a free principle from Healthier Generation that you can use this summer. You could share it in a newsletter. You could put it on social media, adapt it, change it. These are just a base idea for you to take and turn it into whatever serves you. 
So we're gonna check off the flower breath activity from Nature Bingo together. So step one, get in a comfortable position. So I'm gonna scoot up in my chair a little bit. And we're gonna start, and I want you to visualize a flower. You could visualize a garden. You could visu visualize really anything in nature. I like nature because visualizing nature creates just a space to calm down and feel more present. So take a moment and visualize a flower or whatever you'd like to think about that makes you feel good this morning. And we're gonna breathe in together. And I want you to just visualize or pretend that you are smelling that flower. Maybe you're smelling the ocean, maybe you're in a forest. Just take a big deep breath in and smell whatever relaxes you. I'm thinking about my national park that lives, that's pretty close to my house where I live and the smell of the trees. So take another big deep breath in. And this time when you breathe out, I want you to pretend to blow the petals on that flower. Or you could just take a big breath out if you're visualizing something else. Maybe your breath that goes out is just becomes part of the wind, but this is your visualization, whatever is working for you. So big deep breath in, big deep breath out. So let's do that five times on our own. I'm gonna do it too, I'll be quiet but five breaths in, five breaths out, and visualize whatever is working for you today. So as you finish up your flower breath exercise, would love for you to share in the chat one word or a sentence that describes how you're feeling after you did your own flower breath. How are you feeling after flower breath? Angie shares relaxed and cozy. Angie, cozy is like one of my favorite words. Yes, happy and relaxed, renewed, calming, calm, calm, peaceful, calm. Just a few seconds, maybe a minute of flower breath brings in so much great self-regulation. Paired well with uh, the emoji check-in, pairs well with emoji check-in too. I always realize how tense I am. It helps to relax. Yes, you can kind of feel your shoulders push you back. I don't know about y'all, but especially when we were doing so much virtual work during the, the pandemic, I found myself like hunching over and leaning over the computer like a little T-Rex. Flower breath just makes me, encourages you to lean back, put your shoulders back, takes that tension out of your neck. Yes, the hunch is real. Zach St. Matthews with the sunglass emoji again. Yes, I hope that is exactly how you feel after you do that. So just know you've got this resource now. You've got Nature Bingo. One of those squares is flower breath. Put that in your back pocket. And as you think about staff wellness and the wellness of folks you support, uh, this, is, this is in your back pocket now. So even today, like let's say in an hour or two, you're feeling that stress, Angie, that hunch is coming back. Just visualize a little T-Rex over the, over the laptop. Give yourself permission to, to take a minute to do flower breath. We did five 
cycles of flower breath, but you could go for 10, you could do it for a minute. If you're standing in the grocery store and you're feeling stressed, even if you just did it for one, one second of visualizing that flower and taking a deep breath in, that will help you. All right, so maybe I ask another reflection question, another simple activity. Which of the categories of the whole child model do you think flower breath supports? And I talked about staff wellness. So I don't know if you think of, if there are any other categories that you feel like this could be, where this could be useful. And I put in a link to the whole child model again. Any other categories? Counseling, social and emotional. Thanks, Angie. Social emotional climate, yep. I think of this activity as one of those that like turns down the temperature when there's energy is high or frustration is high. Even in my own self, I feel like when I do any breathing ac activity, it just kind of takes the heat down, takes the pressure off. Jim Tackett, thank you, health education. Absolutely, there's so many opportunities to, to leverage breathing to talk about anatomy, STEM, SEL mental health, social emotional climate, employee wellness, awesome. All right, so you all get the format today. Activity, reflection, how does it match to the whole child model? So let's move on to our next activity here. I'll put the link in the chat. This is a brand new resource that you all are seeing. This launched on Friday. It's a partnership that Healthier Generation has with Del Monte that features fun recipes and activities to energize your day. These are actually, these were created for family engagement. So those of you who are specifically interested in that component of the whole child model, I hope this is a resource that you can use this spring, this summer. Um, you could use it. There's some those, some of those recipes are awesome. You could even use those for in your in your own with your own family. So thank, hopefully you can use um, this resource for yourself and for others. It's called Snack Activities. I absolutely love that name. Um, so I put the link in there. So I hope you'll open it up. But we're going to do one of the activities together. And I really love the graphic design of this resource because it looks like a coupon. Uh, there's something about coupons I love. It's kind of fun to cut out. I, I'm going to a conference later this month and I'm gonna laminate these so that they will last a little bit longer. But we're gonna do one of these snack activities together. The one, thank you, Mary. I love this too. So the one we're gonna to do together is called Balancing Acts. And yeah, yeah, I'm reading directly from this, just so you know, cause really I want you to think about, okay, you could do this workshop too. Like, please take this, these resources and activities back and share it with the folks that you work with. <clears throat> so there's nothing wrong reading the activity from the card, cause that's what I'm, I'm about to do. So let's see, let's do, We'll do a couple of these. It's called Balancing Act. You can follow along if you click that link or you can just, just have fun. So the first instruction here says standing in place. So I'm not gonna stand in place. So what I love about these activities is that they're very, uh, you can modify them as much as you like. So standing in place, I'm gonna sit in place. If you wanna stand, you're more than welcome to stand. I highly recommend using this time to add a little physical activity to your day. So standing in place, slowly lift one foot and balance on the other. So I'm gonna lift my left foot and I'm leaning over on my right. And the instructions say hold this for 10 seconds. Let me get my timer out here. I love anything that involves a little timer here. There we go, All right, 10 seconds. We're balancing on our right foot. Feel free to stand or sit. That was, wow, that was, that 10 seconds went by really quick. 
All right, so now switch. So now we are balancing on our left foot. Again, I'm just kind of sitting and leaning. So 10 more seconds on the left foot. And it's as easy as that. That is balancing act number one. And maybe we'll do balancing act number two, three. So seated in a chair, that works well because I'm seated in a chair. Sit up as tall as you can. That in itself is a helpful prompt just to sit up straight. Sit up as tall as you can with your legs in front of you. Slowly raise one leg, then lower it. Repeat with your other leg and do this five times. If you feel like tipping on to the side, use your core muscles to stay upright. So do this on your own, modify, or you don't have to participate, but I highly recommend it. So raise one leg, lower it, do this five times. Three, four, five. Switch legs, one, two, three, four, five. All right, you all are pros at balancing necks from Snacktivities. I put the link there in the chat. So reflection question time, any observations from balancing acts from Snacktivities? Any observations? And you're more than welcome to say you don't like it because this is a brand new resource. So I'd love to know if, if you would modify it or you're like, nah, I don't really like that. I'm totally fine with that. Lauren, I said you said it's okay to share with other providers. I would love for you to share this with other providers, whether it's these resources or still this whole agenda and teach this class to everyone you know. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. Angie says, you should have seen me trying to walk, kill the toe backwards. This was fun. Awesome, Angie. Fine with it. Love it. Thank you. Hannah says, I love the differentiation. You're stuck in a space with just chairs. You can still do stretches from your seat. Absolutely. It's all about using the space you've got, making the best with, with uh, the environment that you have. I mean, think about, imagine doing these stretch balancing act activities while you're uh, waiting for a bus in a park. Think about all those transition times. Um, those are opportunities where you could weave these in. And remember, you got these in your back pocket. You've printed out these coupons. Your kids are waiting, your families are waiting. How can you add a little fun, playful physical activity to it that supports the physical and social emotional health of your kids? All right, I'm going to the chat here. Michelle, when students get restless, it's a great idea. Love it, yes, love it. Gonna print out for my staff to use with their children. Awesome, M. Davis. Short, simple breaks to get you moving and focused. Very well said. Great to redirect kids. Yes, think about how you're channeling energy with your students, whether you wanna bring the energy up or bring the energy down. These are activities that you can use. M. Davis, great for when standing in line, waiting for the bus, absolutely. Angie, should we discuss transitions yesterday? These would work then too. Awesome. 100%. Focus. Yep. I mean, doing these with you all, I find myself feeling so present with you right now. I mean, I wish we were all together in person, but I feel super present with you all just doing these activities together, like connecting with my own mind and body. And I think the balance activities um, support that as well. All right, I'm watching time and I wanna keep going because I wanna make sure you get plenty of resources today. And thank you for everyone who's on video. And let me check in, how are y'all feeling? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways, thumbs up, y'all doing good? Okay, well, chime in the chat. If, if something's not serving you, you let me know because this is your time, I'm here to serve you. Awesome, thank you for that feedback. All right, I got another one for you. 
This one's called Silly and Speedy Conversation Starters. So I'm gonna drop the link in here. Again, what I love about Health Air Generation resources that these are free, they're printable, they're easy to use and adapt. You, I mean, we're just giving you the base idea and inviting you to be playful and creative. Now you take it from there and make it work for your audiences. So we're gonna do silly and speedy conversation starters. Um, I was on a webinar yesterday that we were talking about summer meal service. And one of the challenges is making kids feel welcome when they come for summer meals. Um, so I think this is a great resource that could be used. Um, I've adapted this to make table tents and I've put the conversation starter on the table tent. So when folks came and sat at the table, there was an instant prompt that would bring them together and give them an opportunity to connect um, and chat. It's also a really good way to bring in more youth voice and hear from kids that may not be the ones who, who always speak up. So awesome, Carolyn, you've used these with presenters and they're fun conversations, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna need a volunteer to go to that link. And I want you to pick one of the, someone pick a conversation starter and drop it into the chat. And we're gonna do that together. So if I could get a volunteer to go to the conversation starter link, I'll put the link back in here. Pick one, drop it in the chat. Rachel, we are on the same wavelength because that is my one of my favorite questions. What's your favorite pizza topping? All right, let's go. What's your favorite pizza topping, folks? I'm going to say this is a divisive one. I really like uh, adding pineapple. It's lunchtime, <laughs> yes. Olives, yes, extra cheese. All right, I love it. I'm scrolling up because I'm interested in seeing what everyone's. Olives added, green peppers, mushrooms. All right, someone pick another one. Another question. Actually, I think I saw one up here. Actually, can I get a volunteer? One more question. That other question got lost in the pizza toppings. Would you rather have to eat all your meals as sandwiches or as tacos? All right, folks, tacos or sandwiches? I'm saying tacos. Lots of taco sandwiches, tacos all the way, tacos. All right, I see another question here. Would you rather fly, be able to fly or breathe underwater? Fly, fly, lots of flying. Me too, I think. Oh, got to breathe underwater. A few, uh, actually, several breathe underwater. <laughs> Bring out the little mermaid, Lauren. I love that. Gas is expensive. <laughs> fly. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you all for participating. You are like making my day so joyful here. All right, you all are absolute pros at silly and speedy conversation starters. You may have used these before, but now you have an, a new worksheet with even more printable uh, conversation starters to use this spring and this summer. All right, time for the reflection question. How might you use silly and speedy conversation starters? How might you use it? Now, these were made for families and out of school time programs, but you could use these in a lot of different ways. How would you use it? How would you use conversation starters? All right, getting to know each other at the beginning of summer camp, love it. Use it, you're going to use it at your parent board. Excellent. To get help kids socialize, get to know each other during lunch on the first day to get students talking. Carolyn, absolutely. Anyone else get stressed out when you have to sit next to people for a meal that you don't know? And like the instant reactions, right? Let me pull up my phone and just like not connect because it's just so, I don't like know what to say. 
to have a conversation starter at that table and even better if you put some instruction of like enjoy your lunch ask each other this question it's like a simple way to get people talking and connecting you never know who you're going to meet at at one of these events or or a lunch um, and it's way better than being on your phone the whole time and i'm talking to myself when i say that because like this is a true challenge i have is sitting down with lunch with people I don't know. All right, so many good things in chat here. Um, to bond and connect, team building, bell ringers maybe, community building. Yep, community building. Rachel, can you explain what a bell ringer is? I don't, I don't know what that is. Icebreaker, beginning of the day, fun conversation piece during downtime. Adrian, I love that. I mean, I think these activities are so great because you can weave them into quote unquote downtime, like downtime and transition time is some of the most precious time we have. We can really take advantage of it to increase physical activity and connectedness. L Green, absolutely love that to monitor what my students are interested in and plan activities around the ideas. 100% youth voice. Summer camp, opening activities, icebreakers, writing prompts for reflection, for a reflection journal for your teenager. Hey, these are for your, I hope these activities are useful for you, your family, everyone you work with. We all, Hannah shares, we often have to wait in the hallway when using the restroom, so I might use it as a turn-taking activity and then have the kiddos explain why they chose what they chose. Yes, love it. Hannah, what you shared reminds me, I don't know if folks like old, old school bulletin boards, but these are definitely questions you could put up on a bulletin board or, or on uh, a signage, on signage in a hallway. Icebreakers for fourth and fifth graders, pass the time when you're waiting. You're gonna use it this summer. Awesome, love it helps with SEL, social emotional health. Use it as an icebreaker. Oh, bell ringer is a great, it's really the same thing as an opening activity, just different lingo. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for teaching me that bell ringer. I like that. All right, so I'm going to move on. That was so much fun. Thank you for participating and sharing and reflecting. I have another resource here. So if you like the first bingo card, nature bingo card, we made a second one. And this one was created in partnership with a fantastic organization called Blue Star Families. They're focused on supporting military families and the military community. So what I love about these resources is it's basically 20 resources in one resource. So you, could, you have basically a summer of enrichment activities all on one page. You could change it up. You could play it like traditional bingo. You could just pull out an activity like we did with Flower Breath. So our energy has kind of gone up on this call. So now we're going to do something. I'm just going to take us back down just a little bit. So this activity is called sound mapping. And um, I'm going to explain it. But they're all you need to do, all, you, all the supplies you need to do a sound map is just a piece of paper and something to write with. So I'll give you a second, grab a scrap sheet of paper, pencil, whatever you have available. And if you don't have paper and pencil nearby, that's totally okay. You could write in your phone or you could just visualize this as well. So we're gonna do the sound map activity from Nature Bingo. It's under, let's see, I'll pull up the resource here. It's called Mindful Sound, it's I2. So it's two down underneath the I and bingo. So the reason why we put sound mapping on this bingo card is because being aware of the sounds around you can reduce stress and just improve your focus and concentration. So again, thinking about transition time, thinking about something that's playful, but the, that but will take the energy down just a little bit. This is an activity you could use. So if you've got your paper, pencil, again, you can visualize or use your phone. I'm just gonna put an X in the middle of my sheet of paper. So that's gonna represent you. You're at the center 
of this activity. I also wrote my name. So right now, all I've got is a piece of paper, a little post-it here with my name on it with an X in the middle. So I'm gonna set a timer. Y'all know I love a timer. I'm gonna set the timer for five minutes. And for five minutes, I want you to sit and listen for whatever sounds are around you. Think about what's close, what's far away. Could be even sounds you're making or you could hear your breathing or tapping your foot. But you're just gonna map all the sounds that are around you for five minutes. Now, if you wanna modify this, you could also do color mapping. So rather than sounds, you could look around you and just identify everything of different colors. You could follow like the, the rainbow if you like. So if you don't wanna do sounds, you can do color. You could do texture. Again, make this your own. I'm gonna do sounds, but you all can do color, sound, whatever, whatever fits the environment you're in today. So give me a thumbs up if the instruction, if you're good with the instructions, let me know if you have any questions. This is sound mapping. Thank you for those thumbs up. All right, I'm hitting start and I'm gonna be quiet so we can all listen for five minutes and observe what's around us. Start.
All right. So Nico, I really appreciate what you wrote, you wrote in the chat. This will be a great activity for kids to do who are sensitive to loud noises, love sound mapping. Thank you for sharing that. So I'd like to know, uh, what did you notice? Feel free to share something that you heard, maybe something surprised you. There's a bird outside my window that was chirping the whole time. Hi. Hi there. Hi. So I did want to share. I decided to do um, the different materials that's here in my office. And I mean, there's a lot. I have leather and wood and plastic, cloth, steel, glass. I have paper, cardboard. I got canvas. I have cotton and wool and even a few ceramics. So I just never took time out to um, just sit back and look around and see what all the different uh, materials there are just right here in my little old office. <laughs> That's, that's beautiful. Thank you. I, I really love that you did your own twist to sound mapping and, and looked at the different materials. Yeah. Thank you Thank for you. sharing that. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share? All right. I see some in the chat here. Someone could hear their computer. Angie said, really mellowed out. The air is really loud in here. So it's like a white noise machine. Great option for common kids, especially when stressed or anxious. Thanks, Angie. I have like a little, um, a little heater. It looks like I'm outside. I'm actually inside, but I have a little heater. And it's similar to you. I just started listening to that and it was, became white noise, um, which uh, very calming. Sack Smyrna shares uh, cars, trucks, people humming. L. Middleton, there are a lot more sounds that go on around the office than I realized during the day. <laughs> Lauren shares, my dog needs a hobby to quit all her snoring. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hear my cat meow. She meowed yesterday on a, on a call. Effie shares cars driving past with different sounds. Lindsay shares wind chimes, laptop fan, dogs barking. Bullet County, y'all got some dogs barking too, cars on the street, my stomach growling. Yeah, that, that pizza icebreaker probably didn't help, El Middleton. Heard the air coming from my vents, cars, airplanes flying over, someone else's computer in a training class, someone was cutting grass, kids eating in the cafeteria, my own writing. Love that, Mary. Computer. Excellent. Water boiling on the stove, nice. So this is just one of the activities from our new bingo, nature bingo resource in partnership with uh, Blue Star Families. So I hope you give it a try. Again, feel free to adapt it. T Hicks, I, again, back to your adaptation of texture and materials. I just love that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna, when I do this next time, I might do it that way. I really like it. So um, reflection question again, how does this activity support whole child health? How does sound mapping support whole child health? How does sound mapping support whole child health? Makes you, yeah, physical environment, absolutely makes you more aware of what's going around yourself and the students. Social, emotional, psychological, mindfulness, reflection, pausing instead of go, go, go. It makes them stop, think, and take deep breaths for regulation, absolutely. I don't know if anyone else found this, but I thought about, I started thinking about flower breath while I was doing the sound mapping and just like, I felt my breathing get heavier um, and more mindful. Children connect with nature. Yes, Effie, so many benefits of connecting kids 
uh, with nature and ourselves with nature, being aware of things, our emotions, brings children into focus, can help calm them, aware of the around aware of the world around them. Yeah, the sound of silence. Yeah. Hear things you wouldn't notice before. Like listening to your own writing. Like someone said that. That's that feels really remarkable to me. Like, what does it sound like to hear yourself write? Things that just get sort of lost in the busyness of the day. Awareness. Angie, yeah, that's awesome. I uh, might try this to get to sleep easier at night. Absolutely. Sort of like a journaling prompt. It's just to be aware of the sounds around you. With the full moon, it's a good way to get the kids to calm down and focus. Adults too. All right, so I'm watching time. I think we got a little under 15 minutes left. I have another resource for you. This is also brand new. And if you wonder why it takes me a second to put the link, I just recheck the link before I put it in there just because I want to make sure I'm giving you the, the right thing here. All right. The next resource is in the chat for you. It's called Ways to Keep Active. So we've, we've done some social emotional activities. We've done uh, like that light balancing act activity. So if you're looking for something that's even more active, we just created a new training. It's a 10 minute virtual learning training around keeping active together. It was, was developed for families. But again, you can adapt it and use it however you like. This would be a really great training to use in preparation for the summer. So if you're bringing on a lot of staff volunteers or young volunteers, uh, young people as volunteers, you could have them watch this training to give them a lot of resources around um, intentional physical activity that also supports social emotional connectedness. We developed this in partnership with the President's Council on Sports, Fitness and Nutrition. Go Noodle was also a partner in this. So there's a really awesome Go Noodle video called the Triangle Dance that's in this training. And one of America's healthiest schools, Griffin Middle School, an incredible PE teacher, Mr. Mullis, is also featured with some quick and simple ways for families to increase physical activity through the day. Highly recommend you take 10 minutes to watch this and share it. The physical activity that Mr. Mullis teaches alone makes it worth it. He, he came up with some physical activity games using only a crumpled up piece of paper. For, this was from when he was teaching virtually during the pandemic. So a really simple activity you can use, you could share to promote physical activity um, during the day. And again, that Go Noodle video is amazing. The President's Council has a whole initiative with even more resource, with a lot of resources are called uh, Move Your Way. So uh, the link is in the chat. Would love for you to, um, to check that out. And most importantly, there is a discussion board on that training. I would, I would love to invite all of you to share your physical activity ideas in that discussion board. It's really simple. You just hit the little plus sign and then type in or add a photo, however you like. But would love for you all to be some of the first folks that contribute to that discussion board. Um, again, that's ways to keep active. Brand new resource we just launched. So again, hopefully you could take some resources we did together today, but then pair it up with a training like this to support staff and folks that, that you're working with. So that again is ways to keep active. All right, we're gonna go back to snack activities because I wanna do one more physical activity with you from that resource. Drop that in the chat here. So we're gonna do animal copycats. And again, I've got my, I've got my coupon here. I'm just gonna read the instructions. So this is another stretching activity. Here we go. Step one, choose a comfortable space to move. 
Now the instructions say lay out a towel or set up a chair to sit on. So I'm going to sit in my chair. You can stand up, modify, whatever you're feeling like today. So the next instruction is to think of an animal you like. So could I get some volunteers right in the chat? What's an animal that you like? A cat, a horse, a dog, an elephant, dogs, horse, toucan, cats, sea turtle, sloth, monkey, bird, Rabbits. All right, let's, Nico, you said rabbit. Okay, so we're, we're going we're gonna to use rabbit for this. Think of an animal you like, rabbit, and imagine how they would stretch. Now imitate that animal holding that stretch for 10 seconds. So I invite you all to imitate a stretch you think a rabbit would do for 10 seconds. Keep an eye on my timer here. All right. Do your best rabbits. Uh, what would a rabbit do? It might stretch forward. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, 10 seconds goes by so fast. I'm just like getting into that stretch and it feels really good and the 10 seconds is up. All right, uh, Jessica Spalding from the YMCA said panda. All right, I wanna see everyone do a stretch you think a panda would do for 10 seconds. I'm gonna say a panda would like do one of these like back and forth. So do your best panda stretch for 10 seconds. All right, so you all are experts in animal copycats. Again, this is from Snacktivities, the resource we developed with Del Monte, I will put the link in here one more time. And if you're wondering, where can I get all these links? I created a document that's in the, um, on the website for the conference that lists all these resources. But if you can't find something, do not hesitate to reach out to me here. I'm gonna put all my contact information in the chat. I put in my LinkedIn, my email, my Twitter, you can find me and would love for you to share how you use these activities this summer. All right, we got five minutes left. And we are going to do, we were talking about physical activity in that resource. So I've got one I want to show you. I, I absolutely love simple inexpensive things again back pocket kind of activities this is one of the most popular resources i feel like i've shared over the years while working at healthier generation it's called fit sticks i'll put the title in the chat fit sticks and so you could do this with like popsicle sticks or today we're going to do it i made i didn't have any popsicle sticks so i just made strips of paper so I've got green, yellow, orange, red strips of paper. And uh, I just made up some physical activities and wrote them on my fit sticks. So let me see if I can hold it up here. So each one of these sticks, so imagine these could be popsicle sticks, this could be construction paper. However you wanna do it, put them in a little bucket. I've seen educators use this in so many different ways. I like to do this virtually just to show that you can use fit sticks virtually as well. So could I get a volunteer? We're gonna do the activity that's on the card, but uh, I want y'all to pick red, orange, yellow, green, red. Okay, thank you, Elle Middleton. Reach to the sky. So everybody reach to the sky. Next color. Green, yellow, orange, green. Thank you, Amber. Arm circle, so do your nice arm circle stretches. I'm gonna do a few forwards and a few backwards. All right. Um, it's fun when, you know, I love the open-ended nature of this kind of activity because it just says arm circles. It doesn't even give the number. But when I'm doing that, I'm like, 
starting to circle my wrist. It's like your body just kind of does what you, it knows it needs. All right, um, last one, yellow or orange? Orange, thank you, Claudia. This one's more complicated here. Five times two twists, left and right, left and right. So five times two twists. Five times two is 10. So we're gonna do 10 twists left and right. Just twist however you'd like. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and All right, so one word in the chat. What do you notice about fit sticks? My one word is simple. It's such a simple activity. Yep, Lauren, so simple. But, and quick, yep, thank you, Angie. Cheap, yes. DIY physical activity. It doesn't have to be complicated to be impactful. It certainly will be memorable. Loosening, easy, easy, active, cheap, quick, open-ended, love it. All right, I got one more resource because you all are the first people that I get to share this with. I have a new, I have a blog article that just went live today in partnership with Campfire USA. It's all about supporting military kids during Incredible Kid Day, which happens in March. Lots of resources, including some that we talked about today are in that blog. I hope you'll check it out. And I've got two minutes left. Please, please, please fill out that evaluation. I know, uh, I believe that's gonna get dropped in the chat too. I would love to know what you thought about our session, especially if you would change it, how you would improve it. Um, again, all of these resources are located on the website for the conference, but I will go ahead and put all my information in here again, because I am more than happy to help you. I hope you had fun. Um, feel free to write in the chat if you got any questions, email me. Um, we got one minute left. Would love to know in the chat, is there one thing in particular you learned that you're gonna try? Thank you, Claudia. And I think our session's gonna end here in just a minute, but I really appreciate you all. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Bethany. No problem, Rachel. Appreciate you all. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Don't forget to take a flower breath here and there. Do some stretching. Awesome, Amanda. Appreciate that. I hope your boys enjoy this. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Sax Myrna. And please do the evaluation. I really would love to know what you would want to learn more about in here. All right. I think our time is up. Thank you all so much.